Hi there, uh, this video is showcasing the rig that I've built for this character mesh in front of you. Um, I had to build this rig as part of a university assignment, so uh, yeah. Uh, research wise, for the module, um, I looked at Paul Neal's FKIK blends tutorial, his uh, triple IK leg tutorial, uh, also a YouTube video on the reaction manager, and the um, tech artist forum post on uh, general skinning tips. Uh, I've put a link to all those in the description. Um, also, I've used uh, taught lecture content, which has been taught over the module, kind of thing. So, um, yeah, straight in. Uh, so, this is the actual base mesh that I used. Um, I chose this mesh because I thought it's it's not too difficult for my first rig, and it's got a very nice topology flow over the body, just meaning that the, when it comes to skinning, there's not going to be any major errors like caused by the topology of the mesh, kind of thing. So, that was that. Um, yeah, so straight in. Right. So as you can see, I've got a layer system set up. So uh, it helps segment all the separate sections of the body. Um, so as you can see, within each, I have all the labelled parts, which showcase all the uh, different bones and nubs and controls and whatnot. So yeah, right. Uh, so here are the the main bones, the blend bones, if you will which uh, have been skinned to the uh, actual mesh so they're the ones that control have the main control over the um, over the actual like skin process so when one of these moves it moves and then each have their own separate control systems you can see some of the spine there um, so yeah uh, as you can see it's also color coded so red indicating the mesh's right hand side green for the mesh's left hand side uh, from a mesh perspective and uh, blue for the uh, central points, which have an even, even distribution over the two sides. So, um, right, we're going to the arm to start with. So, um, let's just close a few of these down. So, for the arm, I've used a uh, a IK blend solution, FK IK blend solution, to uh, allow both methods of control for the one limb. Um, as you can see here, if I turn these on. That the uh, the they're the three arms. It's kind of tough to tell. Uh, it's just so as you can see, like the FK arm has a forward kinematics on it, which means that uh, whatever you do to the parent will affect the children. So any bone control stuff like that uh, from the top will work their way down. Um, the IK system does the exact opposite. It works through. Uh, it'll work from the child upwards. So whatever you do to the child will influence the parent, kind of thing. Um, so yeah, what I've done then, so between those two, I've uh, used orientation constraints on this third bone, this blend, third arm, this blend bone system, uh, using orientation constraints to align it properly between the two, and then using uh, wire parameters to uh, wire it in so that I can use a slider, such as this one here, to control the influence between the two uh, meshes. So say I increase that to 100. I'll set it into full FK mode where F forward kinematics has full control over it. So whatever you do to the forward kinematics arm will happen to the blend arm. Similarly, if I set that to zero, then it's in full IK control. Um, yeah, so just reset that. The exact same principle is on the uh, left arm as well with the FK, IK arms and the blends. All the mesh is symmetrical. So uh, let's just get these down. So, I, oh, there. so um, in the actual blended arm itself, for uh, finger control, since these aren't blended, because it'd be very difficult to work on such small joints, if we have a lot of gizmos around, a lot of controllers that would clutter it. Um, for these, what I've done is I've used uh, the reaction manager to create to recreate the key motions of each finger and thumb, um, all in an independent fashion. So, uh, if you just get up the reaction manager. Reaction manager. As you can see here, I've uh, brought in all the different constraints, all the different rotations and variables for the Y and Z, all the axes, and uh, created all these different motions. Um, so we have an index finger curl, there. Oh, a outside of the outside finger curl for the outer finger, a thumb curl and a hand splay spread the fingers out uh, all of these are independent so you can 
you don't have, you can mix it up as much as you like. So it's uh, nothing set. So just reset that. Uh, again, same on the left hand side. So uh, yep, that's the arm done. So we'll go into the right leg. So for the right leg, well for both legs, I've used the exact same system, a orientation constraint with um, by using a Y parameters blend in between the two. Uh, again, using four kinematics and inverse kinematics. Oh, and for the legs, actual inverse kinematics, I've used uh, the Paul Neal's Triple IK foot rig system, which uh, allows for extra control from all these little gizmos around the edge. So uh, you've got like toe, toe rolls and uh, heel control and all that. So it all works again, child food parent. Um, so that's, that's that. Uh, so next up onto the spine. So let's just get that on the view. Right, for the actual spine itself, if I uh, unhide all. Okay, so here are all the actual point helpers and whatnot, which control the spine's orientation and everything like that. Um, these, as like you saw, won't actually be visible; they'd be uh, hidden, so they don't, the uh, animator wouldn't have to work with them. Um, so for this, using a spline IK system to set up all the bones going along, uh, also created separate controls. So. Uh, so that the spine has adequate areas of control from all angles so you can control it from the uh, the waist and then you can even just control it from the waist down waist upwards it's not restricted in any one axis or direction so um, there are a few errors within the spine which I'll cover in the actual um, errors section uh, but yeah that's the actual spine itself so onto the skin, the actual skin in process. To uh, showcase the skin, uh, I created a quick animation loop just to show a few of the actual limbs going for it. Uh, here we are. So let's just roll that along. So as you can see, arm rotations, head rotation, stretch back to show actually the spe stretchy spline at work, uh, and the legs quick little leg chest to test the foot and its flexibility so um, that showcases most of those uh, there are a few errors within the skin um, if we go back to the hand the arms like the skin actually worked quite efficiently um, as you can see the uh, right arm of the mesh seems to have skinned almost perfectly however with the, the slight rotation in the, uh, the left hand side which seems to have caused a bit of shoulder crunching around this point here um, that's that issue um, when it came to the actual spine well actually the head as you can see uh, slight deformation around the back of the neck but uh, apart from that it's pretty good right so when stretching him out um, if I go into the envelopes of it so you can actually see you can see that um, I decided to pull the envelopes forwards in a lengthward fashion rather than going up the spine this way it'll give extra control to the stomach since he has quite a large stomach the mesh that was one area that probably threw me off when skinning it um, there is slight deformation however given the um, the fact that he is stretching in an unorthodox fashion I don't think that it would be something that a character reader would have to worry too much about um, so that's that uh, so, uh, yep, so within the legs, what's next? Let's just scroll down. Here, you can see, for the leg bend itself, yep, you can see that there's a very little crunching in the knee, rather than the mesh actually inverting inwards and changing the, uh, like the dimensions, you can see that it's quite an even split between the two. Um, so it's actually like a realistic crease within the leg. There's no real muscle muscle deformation. Uh, however, within the ankle, when pointed downwards, you can see due to a low topology within the shin, 
um, it's kind of stretched out the ankle bone. Um, so that's that's a slight issue within the feet, but nothing major. Um, so yeah, faults wise, I'll, I'll just reset this soon. Right, faults wise, um, within the actual spine itself, so just turn that off. Turn on the spine. Um, there's a slight issue with the uh, stretch. I tried to implement stretchy bones within it. Um, I got it to work well to an extent. As you can see, I've got the actual stretch modifier here, but um, when I uh, move the rig up, you can see it stretches. This bone separates, I believe that's because I've uh, linked the arms into it, which probably was a foolish decision, but you can see the bone stretches, all the bones stretch upwards and whatnot, but, um, and the chain maintains down here. But uh, yeah, there's no, seems to be no, con the controller doesn't seem to work. If I um, just reset this quickly uh, in here within the transforms. Oops, nope, didn't mean that. You can see I've tried to implement the script to um, actually get this working. However, I can't seem to be able to calculate it. It doesn't seem to work. So that's uh, one of the issues that I came in with the spine. So there's no actual controller for it. It's constantly in stretchy spine mode, which is probably a bad, bad decision, bad place to be in. So, um, so yeah, uh, that's the main fault really, the stretchy spine. Apart from that, pretty much everything, everything else works fine. Um, so to evaluate the entire mesh as a whole, really, I think I've um, I've done quite a good job because uh, it is a rig that would work within a games engine. So because uh, it's within bone limits for like UDK so um, so I, that's a success uh, the lack of complexity within the mesh could be seen as something that has restricted the ability to animate properly but uh, I think that really it's just the um, that the rig is sufficient for the mesh and provides it with all the details and abilities that it would need and that an uh, animator would need when uh when rigging it. So uh thanks, this has been a uh, Nathan Booth, uh B zero zero five two six nine A. Um and cheers for watching.